Hello, this is Scott Buceno, editor of Telecoms.com here at 5G World 2018, and I'm talking to Parvai from Arisant. So, uh, Parvai, why don't you start by telling us what you've been talking about at the show? Oh, sure. Uh, so, uh, I'm in the show, and we are part of uh, Arisant. I'm part of Arisant, and we are a design and engineering services company. We have been uh, talk, working on 5G for a long time, and uh, earlier before that we were on 4G, etc. So we have created software solutions. So even in 5G, we are working with many of the customers with respect to how they can upgrade from 4G to 5G, my complete migration on 4G to 5G. And we are also helping them not only with respect to the software, but also with respect to the hardware. As you are aware, that in 5G, there are a lot of changes that will be required in hardware. So we would be needing all those multipath arrays because if you, if you are going for a millimeter wave, then you have to change completely the antenna side, the hardware, how you are going to put the RAN side, how you are going to have the virtualized cloud. So we are also helping customers for migrating not only the software, but also the hardware as well. And um, we're kind of in the middle of the standardization process for 5G right now. Can you just give us a, an overview of how that's progressing? Oh, wow. Uh, so in, uh, we, we have been following it very closely. We have uh, already started. You are aware that the non-standalone specifications have already come out. They came out in December. So uh, we have been following that and we are creating solutions right now with the non-standalone. But there are already discussions on how they are going to address the standalone. So we heard that the standalone specifications were going to come out in June. Maybe uh, maybe it's a bit delayed, I'm not very sure, but it will be maybe June or July it might come out. And pre uh, pretty much after that, the IoT standardization in 5G might happen after that. Okay. Um, and uh, can you give us a sense of um, some of the immediate sort of use cases for 5G, how it's going to sort of change the industry? But that is a very mil million dollar question because many people are wanting to know that and definitely one thing that is being changed in 5G is people are now addressing use cases specific thing because that's how they are going to make revenue out of it. 5G has promising a lot of IoT specific use cases so not a lot of industrial robotics use cases that will come up. Uh, there are many people who are uh, bent on 5G with respect to automotive industry, all the connected cars etc will be mainly powered by 5G. The industrial revolution, because they're calling it as another industrial revolution, because yeah. they are saying that all the production line and all the things that will be controlled in the industry will be controlled by a connectivity using 5G. Right. And we also saw how that was being used even in the Olympics uh, recently that yeah. was held. So there are many, many uh, such uh, low latency use cases or high broadband use cases which will be powered by 5G. And uh, lastly, you know, all this, um, all this change, all these new use cases must lead, mean a fair bit of uh, adaptation and evolution for telecoms, telecommunications companies themselves. Can you give us a sense of how it's playing out for them? Oh, yes. Uh, so uh, all the telco industries earlier, they were all uh, into a, a simple uh, on-prem devices or they were having hardware specific to racks, etc. Now everybody is going for virtualized solutions. Now they are not even waiting for 5G to come out. Even in 4G, they are all uh, already migrating to virtualized environment. So things like all the control plane elements, you don't need a specific hardware in your premises. You can put it on cloud. So uh, the telcos are moving towards cloud. Another big thing that they are doing is the edge computing. Now edge computing, again, there are uh, different people giving views that, okay, it can be done even in 4G, I agree. But 5G is helping us aid that because on the edge of the network itself, you can uh, put part of the offloading and hence you can get better latency and you can get applications which require uh, local processing. You'll save on the backhaul cost, you save on the latency. So it, um, it is helping uh, telcos in that manner or completely virtualizing as well as putting part of this on the edge of the networks. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.